In this question, we're told the transformation w is equal to z plus 2 over z plus i, where z doesn't equal i, w doesn't equal i, maps the complex number z is equal to x plus i, y, onto the complex number w is equal to u plus i, v. We've got two parts. In part a, we need to show that if the point representing w lies on a real axis, the point representing z lies on a straight line. In part b, it says show further that if the point representing w lies on the imaginary axis, the point representing z lies on the circle, where the circle is the mod of z plus 1 plus 1 half i is equal to root 5 over 2. Okay, lots of different ways around this. What I'm going to do is take an approach that will answer both parts of a question. You could argue that there are more efficient and effective ways of doing each part, but what I'm going to do is write this out, express z in terms of x and y, simply realise it, and then set each part equal to zero. So what we're going to have then is w is equal to z plus 2 over z plus i. I'm going to write z in terms of x and y. So w is equal to x plus i y plus 2. That's the numerator. In the denominator, I'm going to have x plus i, y plus i. Collecting real and imaginary parts, w is going to be equal to x plus 2, and then we're going to have plus i, y. In the denominator, we're going to have x plus i, and then the quantity y plus 1. At this stage, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate, which is going to give me x minus i, the quantity y plus 1. So we'll multiply both the numerator and the denominator. So we've got x minus i, the quantity y plus 1. So if we look at the top, what we're going to have now, and I'm going to write w as u plus iv. u plus iv, that's how we can express w in terms of u and v. We're going to have now x multiplied by x plus 2. So we're going to have x, x plus 2. Then we're going to have x plus 2 multiplied by y plus 1 multiplied by minus i, which is going to give us minus i. Then we'll have the quantity x plus 2 multiplied by the quantity y plus 1. Then we'll have x times by i, y, which will give me plus i, x, y. And then finally, we can have y times by y plus 1. Then we can have now i times by i, which is minus 1. So that's going to give me plus y, the quantity y plus 1. And this is all going to be over now x squared plus y plus 1 all squared. So let's look at now the real and imaginary parts. So if we consider u, u is going to give us the real parts. What we're going to have then is the following. u is going to be equal to x, x plus 2, and then we're going to have now plus y. So let's put this here, plus y, and then we can have y plus 1. And that's all going to be over x squared plus the quantity y plus 1 all squared. If we consider now the imaginary parts, what we're going to have is the following. V will be equal to minus, and I'm just going to expand this out here. What we're going to have then is minus, and we will have minus x, so let's put this on, we'll have minus xy, then we'll have minus x, then we'll have now minus 2y, and then we'll have minus 2, and also now we'll have plus xy. So plus xy, and that's all over now, x squared plus the quantity y plus 1 all squared. So there we go. We're in exactly the place that we need now to solve both problems. In the first part, it says show that if the point representing w lies on the real axis, the point representing z lies on a straight line. So, if this lies on the real axis, v must be equal to naught. So, in part a, we can say the following. We can say v is equal to naught. Therefore, what we're going to have then is the numerator right here is going to be equal to zero. So, we can say zero is equal to minus xy. Then we can have the minus x. Then we can have minus 2y minus 2 plus xy. Quite clearly, the xy's are going to cancel, and we can just rearrange this. So we can now write this as x plus 2y plus 2 is equal to 0. And that is the straight line now in the z-plane. And you can represent that however you like. OK, in part b now, we need to show that this lies on the circle. Now, this is a circle, and I'll just write out what this is going to give us. If we just consider this in Cartesian form, we're looking at x plus 1 all squared, plus the quantity y plus one half, 
all squared will be equal to 5 over 4. That is the Cartesian equivalent now to the modulus of z plus 1 plus 1 half i is equal to root 5 over 2. So in part b, what we're going to do then, if this is lying on the imaginary axis, what we can say is u must be equal to 0. So if u is equal to 0, therefore what we will have is the following. And expanding this out, we can have x squared plus 2x, and then we can have plus y squared plus y must be equal to 0. So let's now complete the square on the circle. We're going to have x plus 1 all squared minus 1 plus the quantity y plus 1 half all squared minus, now that's going to give me minus 1 quarter, is equal to 0. So we get x plus 1 all squared plus the quantity y plus 1 half all squared is going to give us now, adding the constants to both sides, 5 over 4, which is in Cartesian form exactly the same as what we're given here. The mod of z plus 1 plus 1 half i is equal to root 5 over 2. You might want to make a concluding statement, therefore, now it lies on this circle as we've got it exactly the same in Cartesian form. So there we go. Um, is there a quicker way of doing this? Potentially so for both parts. But if you want to answer the question, and especially this technique is widely used throughout FP2. So if you want to use the technique and simply let it uh, uh, solve both parts, this is one approach that you can take. If you've done it another way, that's perfectly fine. But this is just one particular way it can be done.